All right, Bomb Squad, welcome to episode 88. You hear that music. Guess what, Tones? I found it. What, what did you find? That song. That song a year and a half ago, maybe. When I was all I knew was I can't Google that. I can't ask people what song is that. So I was just wait. I didn't know if it was a guy or a girl who sung it. I didn't know anything. So I couldn't find it. I would I didn't know what stations to listen to on the radio. Like I didn't know if it was 80s or 90s. But guess what? I was in the parking lot yesterday at a, at a bar with my buddies. And one of them just starts singing the fucking chorus to this song out of the goddamn blue. And I look at him and I said, what did you just sing? <laughs> sing it again. <laughs> sing, sing and I said, again. that's it. What is that song called? He said, oh, you fucking walking on glass. What is this called? Walking on glass? Walking on glass huh. by Amy Lennox or Annie Lennox. So I go to Spotify right in the spot. Click, like search it, click it, put it up to my ear, and it's the fucking song, and it's like incredible. I mean, it's like the most satisfying fucking looking for a song. I never thought I'd find it. I genuinely never thought I'd find that song. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's like in a movie when like people are separated in like a war torn country and they end up like reuniting at the end. Like they never thought it would happen. Like, that's exactly that's the, the song. You're just like, it's like a beautiful moment. Like you're sitting there crying. Like I never thought I'd see you again. And my buddy who's saying it had no idea like the significance. Like I grabbed him. I was like, do you know what this means? <laughs> do you know what you've done right here? Just like on a whim. I've been looking for this. Like the Ark. Like I was Indiana Jones, trying to fucking save the Ark from the Nazis. And I never thought I'd find it. Like I said, I didn't know to look on 80s on 8, 70s on 7, 90s on 9, New Wave. And to just be on one of those channels at the right time when they would play that song yeah. is nearly impossible. Yeah. You need multiple like devices playing like 24-7 to try and... And I come that, I've come that close. I've come that close <laughs> to doing that, to find this fucking song. I don't know what it is about it. It's not even that good. It's just like it's caught in my head. I needed to find it. It was out of principle. So I was going to ask you, like, are you like disappointed with the song now? Now no. that you found it? No, I'm not. No, I take what okay. I just said back. I've listened to okay. it like seven times today. Okay. <laughs> Do you think it has staying power? You think it's to be regular in the rotation, or you think it's like I'm like, going to run gonna it to the ground? It out. Okay, you're going to run. You yeah. ever you ever love a song so much that you just like right when it's over, you just click right back and start yeah. it again, just yeah. run it back, and then. A few weeks later, you're like, ah, I'm not as good anymore. Yeah, no, I do. I do it all the time because I don't. I don't listen to much music, but like when I do, I just like listen to the same like two or three songs over and over again, and I get tired of it real quick. That's why I don't listen to much music because I just like kill whatever I listen to. Yeah, I'm listening to music probably seventy five percent of the time. Yeah, Head, like headphones on and like full volume. Yeah, I don't listen to music low. Okay, Metallica, you can't you can't listen to that quietly, and this song too, you can't. But I'm so happy. I, I'm just so happy. I'm ecstatic. Walking on Glass by something Lennox. She's uh, she's the one who sang it. So check it out. That was good. All right. So we got a Saturday show. Uh, world famous segments. Classic four pack. Yankees just beat the shit out of the Red Sox again. Uh, London. I guess they just we won the war over there. We won the battle. Yeah. Great times. Bullpen sucks. But anyway. All right. Let's get to our world famous segments. Hit it. Taylor Hicks. Okay. We have a horse race to start, and it would be great to win money for like the first time in a long time. Let's just get it going. It's 4th of July, you know? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. It's almost the 4th of July. Let's fucking win. Like, this is when you're supposed to win races like this. So we're at Tampa Bay Downs, race six. I have uh, Maddie Salsa for uh, the four horse, nine to five. And you got something Tomcat? I got uh, number two horse, Hollywood Tomcat. Uh, 15 to show. 15 to show. All right. Let's go to Tampa Bay Downs. Los Alamitos. We're at the post. Let's go, Maddie's, uh, Maddie Salsa. And they're off. Away and running to a perfect start. Huh. Maddie Salsa. Maddie Salsa. He said it wrong. Right for the Italy. Now double reverse moves up to challenge for the pace. Up on the outside, Ashley's Rose is oh, right around the turn. Come on, Maddie. It's got to be my way. Oh, 56 to 1 is chasing me? Dude, this is in the bag. I'm going to blow this fucking race out, Maddie Salsa. Go, Top Cat. Let's go, Top Cat. 15 bucks, 2 to 1. The long shot on the outside moves up now. Second, two and a half legs farther back. Ashley's Rose is a bit closer third, and she puts Hollywood's Tom Cat. Now back. Come on. 
It's got to be my way with clear racing room on the outside. And then toward the rail is La Posa. And now picking off horses one by one. All the way back. They continue their journey. You're done. Get out of my race. This is my race. This is the fucking Maddie's Salsa Invitational. This is a long fucking race. I don't like it when my horse is in a long fucking race like this and winning the whole the whole time. And now it's but I ain't giving an inch. Come on, Maddie. Get this one horse off my shit. Come on, Maddie Salsa. This is the longest fucking race. Come on, Maddie Salsa. You can move, Tom Come on, Maddie Salsa. Finish the job. You've done so much work. You've done so much. Don't blow it. No, don't blow it. Keep going. Keep going, Maddie Salsa. Go, Maddie Salsa. No, no, no. Oh. No, oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Ding donging back and forth. Clear throughout the sixth at Tampa, but it looks. Fuck. Oh. Had the race for 25 minutes. I can't believe we blew it right at the finish line. Oh. Well, that's about that's about as close as you can oh, come man. to winning a race, but not winning it. That was one of the most devastating horse <laughs> races I've bet on a long time. <laughs> that was fifteen bucks. That just sucks. It's a five dollar deposit fee too, so it's yeah. twenty bucks. Oh, fuck! That would have been nice. All right, that's how she goes every fucking time. You like to win it all. Point nine percent of that race, you oh, would. Damn it! All right, <laughs> let's get to let's get to our second segment, which is a new segment. Thank you, Mark Wahlberg. Um, so by re by request, I was quite complimented by this. Ask a skinny guy. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm more of a former skinny guy. I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, you're you're skinnier than me. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I got a picture to send you. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface it. So, I want to know: Do skinny guys like if it's hot out, and let's say like you're wearing jeans or something, and you have to like walk a lot? Let's say you're in Disney World or you're at some you know Six Flags where you're walking and you kind of get sweaty down there. Do you ever get like a rash like between your legs from walking too much? Uh, I you know where I get it when that happens is uh, the armpits. Huh. Okay. That's because, about it. I don't. Because, shave. Okay, you don't shave because the last month i've been working like six day work weeks and i've just been walking and walking and like i i i even got to the point where i had to like put band-aids like on my inner thighs just to like stop like the chafing and then yesterday you know it was so bad i came home and i took the band-aid off and like i just sent you a picture look at what i had i'm like don't worry there's no balls in it but let me see let me see text message received whoa gross you know what it reminded me of in uh, uh, what was that movie you gave me? Um, Requiem for a Dream, when he's like sticking the needle like in the open, like that's what it looked like on my oh leg. My God, it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was bad. Like it was like I couldn't even walk towards the end of the day. I was just like wobbling around. So that's a fat guy problem, I guess. Like that is intense. I mean, paper change. I've, I've never had it that bad. Yeah. Never had that bad. Usually, I could. I mean, usually, I would have some days off where I could kind of sit and just like go, like go spread eagle and just like make sure there's no chafing going on. Yeah. Um. But this, is, for like I said, for like a month straight, I've been working like six day weeks with like you know one day off in there. So it's like I just been. I haven't had a time to let it like fucking recuperate. Um. And like I've had like much minor versions of this in the past, like pretty frequently, but nothing like this. That's why I was just kind of on the mind. I had to ask you. Whether that was like a fat guy thing or a skinny thing. No, yeah, that doesn't happen to me. That's horrible. That's a horrible. I, I mean, I, I would post that picture to the Twitter, but like nobody's going to want to see that. That's gross. <laughs> you know what I get a lot of rashes from just on a sidetrack? And I don't know if it's just me, but Old Spice deodorant, which I still use every time. I don't know why. I'm like blindly brand loyal to them. But if you, you can get a bad batch of deodorant from them pretty easily, I feel like. Have you ever got really? like you put the fucking deodorant on, then you just have like. The worst fucking rash in your armpits. I've never oh. had that. Oh, and you feel it right away. You're just like, no, oh, it's a bad batch. 
<laughs> so you just keep using it? That. You just got to deal with the day. With the day. Like, Why would you just use a different deodorant? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, that would just fix this problem. Just use a different deodorant. Use, like, I don't even know, like, a degree or fucking anything else besides Old Spice. They got good-looking product. They do. They, 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 they do a great good. job of marketing with their, their commercials with, like, the, the guy that was, like, the black dude that was, like, the centaur and he was – right. Doing all this stuff like they don't they have great marketing, don't get me wrong. And I, I use old spice, but I don't get rashes from them. So well, if there's any listeners, I'd like to hear back from that because it's fucking bad. They're very annoying. And it's they're the only deodorant because I will use some others and I never had problems like that. But with them, I got a fucking problem. But uh well, no, I don't I don't chafe uh well, like let me ask. So you said you get it like under the arms, right? So like when yeah. you walk, do you pump the arms a lot? Do you like yeah? Okay, that's probably I why. Flail. I probably walk like a moron. I don't like <laughs> look at myself. I, I don't think I've ever seen myself walk before. I don't know. I walk with a purpose, though. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm locked in, <laughs> like locked in. Well, that's probably why you get on the arm because you're, you're you know you're pumping the arms. You're just getting your strut yeah. going. You know that, that might be it. <laughs> that might be it. That's probably it. You ever try just walking with your arms out your sides? Just no, because so I'm really uh, what's the word? Self conscious because in high school. A lot of people accuse me of being a robot because I walked really like uh, like I was made of stone. Okay, <laughs> I'm like just a very like not breakable frame. I was so skinny and tall, my body like grew in a weird way. Where yeah. like I just kind of walked robotically is what people would tell me. And I okay, <laughs> so I do think of my walk and I become a little bit more loosey goosey. So I'm not robotical. So I probably yeah. just like a flailing like whimsical fucking gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all you gotta do is just look at your walk. Like, yeah, he's gay. He's gay. Look at that walk, Jesus. <laughs> well, we one time I had a, we get well, it. You're gay. We get well, it. One time I had to go up in high school to the to the chalkboard to like you get randomly selected to prove you did homework and like right. do your work on the board. And I was walking up, and it was a class with like older kids. And one of the older kids was just like, "What is that guy made of stone?" <laughs> and everybody laughed, and I was so embarrassed. <laughs> it's like I walk like a moron. It's such like a dumb thing, but like it's like I could see how that's being funny in a classroom full of guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what like, it was. Stone. I walk up and just like I'm a machine. <laughs> like, what the hell's wrong with you? People would ask me to do the robot, and I was like, I don't do a good robot. <laughs> <laughs> just walk. Yeah, yeah, just fucking walk. Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of dicks. But uh, yeah, so no. But we'll get to our next segment here, which is another new segment. Thank you, Mark Wahlberg, which is Ask a Fat Guy. So this is a good one. Pardon me if this is offensive, but I know you well enough, so you know that I come from a good place. When did you become fat? <laughs> and how? <laughs> I've always been on the bigger side. Um, my, my whole life, really. I mean, it's just I just I just like food too much, man. Is that what it is? It's That's like, what it is. Like, I mean, everyone everyone's got their vice, you know, some people drinking. Uh, yeah. Other people drugs, um, like if you like, I, I don't know, man. I just like food. Like I just enjoy food a lot. So, and, but a lot of kids are born with just a big frame, like an unfair. Well, I definitely, I'm definitely born with a big frame. I got wide shoulders. I got thick legs. Right. You know, but I mean, I, my habits don't help. Right. But I will say, the people like that, like a lot of people get born with that gene where they have a big frame. Some people are just not meant to be skinny. Like, yeah. Some guys are just born to be fat. And like, if you weren't fat, you'd be no fun. Or like, you wouldn't look good either. It would be weird. I saw, weird, yeah. I know a kid who used to be like 350 pounds and now he weighs like 190. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's probably just like kind of like, like flabby, skinny, right? Like, he's no. skinny fat or whatever. He's ripped. Oh, really? But it's just weird because it's like, oh, he must be a dick now. <laughs> I mean, the, Mr. Mr. Discipline over here. <laughs> I, I think the, the skinniest I've ever been, like as, an, as a grown person, was going into like freshman year of college. Like I even I even took some like steroids to like help like, you know, get in shape and everything. And I was like dieting and everything. And then as soon as I got you to took college, steroids. Yeah, I did. My, 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 uh, my buddy from high school, he's like, yeah, like my cousin, he, he gets this shit. Like we should, we should try it. It's like a, it's called Anavar. It's like a sprinter's steroid. So it doesn't build like bulk muscle, but it like it's supposed to build like kind of like leaner, Tight. like quick, yeah, quick twitch muscle. Cause I wasn't trying to bulk up. I was trying to slim down. So I did that for a couple months. Like, was it like inject in the butt? Like Barry no, 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 like a little, like a little pill. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it was um, 
But I did that. Yeah, that breaking news. This is this is this is fascinating. Oh, you never knew that? Tones took steroids. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I definitely didn't. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, there you go. Breaking news. Well, um, no, if I did know that, I would be busting your balls every episode of how like you're banned <laughs> from the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's you make some decisions when you're younger. It seems like a good idea at the time, but you know, I'm just trying to get ahead. That's it. That's it. I'm just trying to make make a name for myself. But no, I mean, I was going into freshman year, and then once I got to college, I just the the booze and and the weed took over and it was it was a wrap. Yeah, that comes food. Yeah, I, like all of college, I worked out maybe like four times throughout yeah. all of college. Even though that whole summer, I worked out like every day. Um, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, how, how, how to keep it fat? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, what? it comes down like I hate to like blame my parents, but like in my family, like we're very regimented. Like we don't miss meals. Yeah, like I'll skip breakfast sometimes, but like lunch, we always have at the same time for our home, whatever. Dinner, same thing. It's always like six thirty, seven o'clock, and it's it's never like it's never a day where it's just like oh, like I just I'll skip lunch today. Like no, I'm having lunch. Like don't <laughs> fucking come between me and my lunch. Like there's people like oh, I, I forgot to eat today. I don't forget to eat if I'm like today, like today, like when I'm home and I'm not doing anything. I eat lunch like around twelve, around four or five o'clock. I start moseying on upstairs. I'm like, hey, what's what's for dinner? What are we doing tonight? You know, <laughs> like I'm thinking about it already. And what's and what's usually for dinner? Italian food. Well, yeah. Usually tonight we're making some uh, making some filet mignons. Some oh. filet mignons. I, I went to went to the depot, and uh, well, this this was a steal. I bought it was like a, a, a nine pound like filet mignon, like piece of filet mignon. It was like eighty bucks. Damn. Yeah. How many fucking fillets are you gonna make that into? Like thirty? No, I think we did uh, maybe about ten or twelve. No, maybe like yeah, around twelve. I think my dad cut it up. Damn. But they're thick too. They're thick, th thick fillets. But you think about it. You go to a restaurant. You get a filet mignon. It's like forty, fifty bucks. Oh yeah. I got a whole fucking loin for fucking yeah, eight. Yeah, most people don't have access to restaurant deep. Right. So I mean, that's, what's, man. that's what's on the, on the on the menu for tonight. But good. For yeah, you. it's just like it's just kind of always been that way. So you know? wait, wait, wait. So also go all the way back. Fast forward where you were when you were in college. Okay. And then you, the booze, everything kind of fucking started to get. Yeah. A little bit bigger so would you like would you want to lose weight because in my honest opinion as long as you're healthy keep it keep the weight you you're I, per perfectly you probably, you probably own swimming pools like if there's a pool party and you're in there you're probably very buoyant like he's alpha <laughs> the alpha male I, I could definitely stand to lose like 20 pounds maybe 30. i'd rather be fat than what i am at a now at a pool like when no. i take my, like be like the worst skinny fat guy and like flab it's like so embarrassing like whereas if you're fat you're just like oh, dude that's a sign of wealth like that <laughs> like, in puerto rico that's something yeah <laughs> no i mean listen i could i definitely want to lose some weight i mean because if i lost like 20 pounds i'd still be a big guy but i wouldn't be like fat i'd just be like chunk you know yeah i'd be i'd be thick thick Possibly. i wouldn't be like flabby i would like i would have it's really just the stomach. I want, I want the stomach to come down a little bit. Yeah. You know, the rest, I mean, I got the arms. You know, I got, got these forearms. Like, look at these. These are fucking diesel, man. Like, you don't know. Rock hard. Rock <laughs> hard. You know, I don't I don't have to worry about that. It's it's the stomach, really. And my yeah. ass. I got a fat ass, but I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yes, I don't mind. Good. It's good, like, in a situation when you're, like, trying to make room somewhere. You just kind of pop it out a little bit. And you're just like, oh, it's like you're in a crowd. You're just, like, pushing people back with it. Right. Crowd I, control. It's just interesting, especially I don't I'm if we ever have Frank the Tank back on, which we can at any time, uh <laughs> very easy to get. <laughs> I would love to ask him this question. I think I wonder if he'd answer it. Like, how have you become this size? He's about yeah. well, 425 like, yeah. pounds. Like, right. When did it completely go off the rails? Like what number was it? 300? Where you're just like, fuck it. Yeah, because it's like, I mean, with me, like I'm I'm about 250 right now. Which is like big, but it's not four. It's not, yeah. you know. I mean, but even with that, it's like you know, one day you just kind of look up. And you're like, oh shit, like how do I get this big? Like, at, at what point when you get to four twenty five are you like, holy shit, how did I? Like at some point before then, you have to notice. Like I'm getting fucking huge. Yeah, you know, like even like when you hit that three hundred mark, you're just like, oh fuck, and you got another hundred and twenty five pounds on top of that. Yeah. So like, and, and Hanks, I mean, uh, Tanks fucking. Uh, your book picture came out a while ago and it, it, him in high school, he was probably max like 250 pounds, 260 pounds. Really? Normal. Yeah. Normal guy, normal fat guy. And then phew, 
double it's, it's a spiral man i mean some people like stress eat they like depress eat you know like you're just fat you're like fuck I'm fat i'm just gonna eat anyway you know what i do this is a helpful tip for people trying to lose weight and i'm telling you i'll eat the most unhealthy shit like for example i had a pork wagon cheese this morning and it's cut in two halves so i ate the first half and i was still hungry but when i went to go take a bite of the second half i just went no <laughs> and threw it in the garbage <laughs> gone that's it there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> yeah that, i mean that that's ideal but yeah because that, that happens to me all the time where i have like i have like a big sandwich i'll eat half of it i'm like i'm like content content but like i kind of want a little bit more and then i'll take a couple of bites yeah yeah because it tastes so good and i'll have a couple of bites it's like well i'm not gonna save like a quarter of a sandwich like i'm gonna finish it and that's what happens. It's and then like, bang, it's two thousand fucking calories. Just like yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing, another thing that contributes is I never leave food on my plate. Mm. Like if I go out to a restaurant, I'm finishing everything. Like so, I'm the opposite. So that's the difference of a hundred yeah. pounds, basically. <laughs> Over time, yeah, like, <laughs> it adds up. No, you should try it though. Just like it's like literally like throwing a bomb. Like no, get you know, it. <laughs> you know what it is too. Is like I just don't like eating leftovers. Oh, the, well, the throwing the bomb thing. Yeah, that, that. But then I feel like I'm wasting it. Then I feel wasteful, and I don't like that. There's I throw starving porter, children I throw in Africa. Takes away every football season. A lot of them I've thrown away. A ton. The starving children in Africa. Go mail it to them, man. A steak? <laughs> yeah. Gonna mail me a Sunday? <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, don't lose weight. Just stay. Just stay buoyant. I, I, <laughs> I want to try and lose, like, because especially if I get a different job, like, where I'm not as active as I am now, I'm going to gain another 30 pounds in, like, a month yeah. just based off my eating habits. Because, like, I, I I walk, like, 10, 15,000 steps a day, you know, every day. That keeps and a lot off. Yeah. And, I, and I can't, like, I'm just kind of stuck at this one thing because I just eat so much. I can't help it. This is getting like kind of weird and depressing. <laughs> I just can't stop from eating. Hey. <laughs> well, it's better. I think I'd rather you be three hundred pounds and have a good job than be two hundred and fifty pounds. Don't I probably would too. And honestly, if I, if, I, if I had more time and more money, I'd buy healthier shit. I'd go to the gym. You know, I'd no way pay attention to more. I, I used to go to the gym. I used to go to the gym for a little bit before. <laughs> Adam, There's Adam, no way. You don't think I'll go to the gym? No. Look, I used to, I used to go to the gym a lot. I mean, between from when I graduated up until I started my, my makeup sales job, I was off for like four or five months. I was going to the gym every day. Oh man. Well, I mean, it's not even. It's just like don't eat so much lasagna. You know, it's like uh, you know, it's, it's the breads, man. I might go on the keto diet. Just cut the breads out. The bread. Don't don't come to Tom Subs. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you don't have wraps. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tom Subs. Tom wraps. wraps. Tom no. Subs wrap. <laughs> what do you think? When you say Tom Subs, what do you think of? Wraps. <laughs> the bread. Come on. But, Maybe okay. get some flat breads in there, some pizzas, you know. We'll get some fat people on the on the show. We'll ask them, how did you get fat? <laughs> Walk <laughs> us through it. But all right, let's get to our next segment. Another Ask a Gay. So this one was, uh, I'm not going to get, it's not too like in depth, but I was just curious because I saw some people posting on Instagram stories. Like at pride parades and stuff. Would you ever consider going to a pride parade? Uh yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know my stance on the pride parade, right? Yeah. So I would go for sure. I just despise what it is. I wish they would tone it back so much. Like everybody just thinks gay people like it's a month for dicks to fly all over the place. It's like it's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> have a parade just fucking like start like yeah have a float and wave to people and go by you don't have to fucking pull your dick out and fucking do a meat spin you know there's kids it's just like it's like cross dressers drag queens it's like the whole lgbt so it's like it's everybody in the army but like it's the gay pride parade so like me being gay is association with all of that which yeah. i'm not and i'm don't have any problem at all with drag queens and all those people want to do do some of them, Some are, them are scary. scary. Live yeah. your life. They're harmless. You know, if you're 6'3", 220, and you're wearing yeah. a dress, and you kind of have a little 5 o'clock shadow, that's kind of scary. It's, it's kind of scary. Yeah. But my whole thing is I want gay, the word, to not be so attached to that in this month. I'd rather be like, I mean, if you talk to me, you'd never fucking guess it. I wish people would look at it like, you never know who's gay. Like, you know, like you never know. Don't assume like, oh, like you got any girlfriends? Like I get that question every day. Yeah. That's like, that's something pisses me off. And I'd like, 
internally, not with the person who's asking yeah. it's their fault, but they're just like, so like married kids, like you got the whole what thing. The fuck like, do you think <laughs> you, got, you got a girlfriend yet? I'm like, I like, I have to fucking sit there and just be like, no. And then I, once I do tell them gay, they're just like, you are. And they said, <laughs> they react like that because of the, the pride parade. Yeah. Yeah. It's all over the news. It's all over everything. And people look at it and it's just fucking dicks on the streets in a parade floats dressed like leprechauns. Yeah. I mean, you said too. I mean, like you know, it should be like you can't tell if someone's gay or not, but like that's not the case. Like most people, no. you can tell, right? Like, but there's right. plenty of people like me out there, and that's why it makes it For impossible sure. to come out. Yeah, because when sure. you tell people that you're admitting that you're one of like that's your that's your scene, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> what you like to do on the weekends is yeah. is go fucking dicks out in the highway and fucking <laughs> like just sing girls want to just want to have fun. Yeah, <laughs> or draining men. Yeah, but no, I'm gay, just like the rest of those people, but I prefer having a beer and watching a fucking football game. But people find that, like, that's, that's strange as a gay person. Like, well, it fucking shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, listen, everyone has their thing, and just because your thing is football and dicks, like, you shouldn't be persecuted for that. Right, right. But to answer your question, I would go, because they look like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm sure they're a big party. I'm sure they're a good time. And, and hey, maybe probably, you, you I could, get laid. Yeah, I should go. I actually should go because I could actually meet gay people there. There you go. There's, there's a little fucking something to find in there. But yeah, that's my, my point on it. It's, a, it's just a big old circus. It's a circus. You know what your problem is, Tom? You're too butch. I'm a dick is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am butch. I'm a, I'm a lesbian of gay people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Melissa Etheridge. Yeah, Ellen DeGeneres. I'm a little harder than Ellen. I got I'm Ellen yeah, DeGeneres with an edge. You're like Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, but that's a bad. good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm yeah, in between Rosie, Ellen, and Melissa Etheridge. Yeah. Like yeah. if they all scissored and had a baby. I'm the guy who's like, come to my window. <laughs> Shout out Melissa Etheridge. <laughs> all right. Let's get out of that. Let's go to our fifth segment. It was all dream. All right. I gotta go first. Okay. This was an intense dream. You know what? It's a nightmare. So it was weird. This is one of those dreams I don't know if I should look into because it's got I've, it's bothering me. So basically, I'm at this hotel. My entire family's there. This beautiful hotel somewhere. I don't know where it is, but it's like uh, it's like uh, in The Shining when like uh, the, all the ghosts show up and it's like a gold room and it's like a beautiful thing, but they're all like ghosts. Like, okay, yeah. Like so a giant kind of room kind of thing, right? So it had a vibe like that, and we were having a great time, and we were all wasted. It was awesome, laughing our asses off. And there's this thing for some reason at the concierge desk, and this guy had dates for everybody who's staying at the hotel, their death dates. Oh. But he's not allowed to reveal that information. Mm. But we were all wasted, and so was he, and we were all cracking up hysterically that he was kind of just like starting to give it out. <laughs> so like he was like, oh, you're fine. You're you're like, oh yeah, you're 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 good, buddy. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> I saw this year, he's like, You're you're fine. <laughs> then I go. So this is where it turns into a nightmare. So it goes from laughing, having a good time, and then he looks at my name, and then his his face goes white as a ghost. White as a ghost. Yeah. And he's terrified. And I'm like, what is it? And everybody kind of like the party kind of dies, and he says, October 29th, 2019. Mm. And I said, the Bucks did it, didn't they? <laughs> they finally got me. <laughs> Those are my words. But I was trying to crack a joke, but everybody's like, what? You're dying like in a few months. I'm like, shit. <laughs> oh, no. And oh, then wow. I woke up. So that is weird. October 29th. Yeah. Very specific by that fucking guy. You got to be careful on that day. Just that. I, have, what, I wonder what day of the week it is. Let's look that fucking up. I hope it's not a Sunday. <laughs> That would it's be, like prime football season. That would be something. It was it's a, a it's a Wednesday. It's a Tuesday. Maybe after Monday Night Football the next day. Are you on Monday Night Football? Day? <laughs> we might. Let me see. Yeah, that would. I mean, like it was very specific. But mm, if I was you that day, I'd take off. I wouldn't leave the house. I'd stay away from any sharp objects. Yeah. No, we played the Titans on the twenty seventh at one p.m. Okay. But that's crunch time of the season. 27 but, set. No, when I'm looking at the wrong day. I just gotta like I just gotta like look out for buses. I, it's gonna be that's a day I'm gonna be I'm sure it's just gonna be fun and it was just a dream, <laughs> but still. Yeah, it's like yeah, you don't want to take any chances. I left that dream and I was just like, what was that guy talking about? 
<laughs> the front desk dick. But the other thing, too, he said the wrong name. That was another thing. Mm. I got to see the list, and he misheard my name. It was oh, like Keeney. Sure. But then I found my name because it was nearby, and it was like, oh, shit. Whoa, this is intense. I got a bloody nose out of nowhere. What the fuck? <laughs> Do you see this? Yeah. Holy oh, shit. my God. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that's not good. That's the not good. Can we take a commercial break real quick? Yeah, let's Holy <laughs> gather shit. ourselves. Dude. What the fuck? You're freaking me out. I'm free dude. <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh my god. That's fucking wild. That's fucking not good. October 29th <laughs> is not a good that was a, so that that's well I, you know what fuck it that's got to be a, a weird omen yeah i'm Whoa. telling you october 29th take it off don't do anything oh take a personal God. day like, you don't fuck with omens like that i can't believe i was just talking about that nightmare yeah. and it was my death date and i just got a bloody nose got a bloody nose dude that's some ghost shit that's got to be ghost stuff those sound boxes that told you not to fuck with them, man. Dude, my nose is like, <clears throat> I never get nosebleeds. Yeah, it's not like you do drugs or anything. It's not like it's yeah. like a common thing. <sighs> Holy crap. You got some on your wrist. Other one. Jesus. Jesus Christmas, I'm sorry. Don't want to use the Lord's name in vain at a time like this. <laughs> Christ, why have you forsaken me? <laughs> that was that was like horror movie material. <laughs> Dude, we have to pull the video of that and post that. Yeah, I gotta I gotta look back at it. Because I didn't notice until you said something that I saw it kind of like on your like your lip. Whoa. You got it plugged? Yeah. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Let's come back. All right. We're back. That was fucking weird. So yeah. basically, we were just talking about that dream. That it was a very genuine weird dream that I didn't want to talk about, but I had to. And as I got to the ending of it, my nose just started bleeding out of nowhere. A lot. Yeah. yeah. When you talk about your death day, your nose just starts bleeding. That is that is got to be some ghost or I don't want to say the D word, but some crazy stuff right there. Yeah. So some... I'm plugged. My nose is plugged now because it's plugged. fucking dripping blood. So let's stop. I'm not talking yeah. anymore about my yeah. dream. You, have, you got anything? I got some dreams. But real quick, funny story about bloody noses. Um, not funny, kind of me bragging, but when I was in Little League, got a bloody nose in the middle of the game. I was playing first base, and so like they just like gave me a handful of like Dunkin' Donuts napkins while I'm playing the field. And I'm sitting yeah. there holding my nose, and there's a runner on first, right? And there's a fucking screaming, you know, ground ball hit my way. I'm going to my right, I backhand it, pick it up, drop the napkins, throw the second, run back to first, catch it, double play. Oh, Whoa. bloody. Anyway, damn, I yeah, a little. Well, <laughs> I can top it because I think my bloody nose came from like another world. Yeah, no, I was just you know on the topic of bloody noses. We have to get the footage of that. That's gonna look crazy. <laughs> we'll you're gonna hear that dream, and then you're just gonna see my nose fucking bleed. <laughs> that was insane. We'll Not good. The, uh, we'll get that out to the bomb squad. Um, so I had two dreams. Um, <clears throat> the first one we had. I guess I was in college. I don't know. But there was some kind of like final or big test we had to take. And for some reason, we had to go to the sorority house and we had to hold them hostage. Right. We ran in there with guns and we had to like, they had the answers in the house somewhere. <laughs> like we had like one guy was like, you know, brought them all down to the basement, and like holding out gunpoint. He's like, don't fucking move. There was like 50 of them in this one house. I don't know how like so many people lived in this one house, but we were just like digging through whatever. And then eventually at the end, 
uh, one of the girls was just like, you know, we can help you study. Like, we passed the test already. And that was it. And they helped us study, and then we became friends, and it was cool. Whoa. So it just kind of started out, like, real intense, like, you know, kicking in the door. And they turned out to be really nice. Yeah, they were cool. They were like, yeah, we'll help you study. Don't worry. And they were, like, real, real, real nice about it. Like, we understand. It's a tough test. <laughs> so that was that. Um, this other one was was out there. So um, we had this big uh, – we had a sting, right, to try and get a mob boss. Yeah. Um, the mob boss was uh, – you know who Sebastian Maniscalco is? I do not. Okay. Well, he, he made the rounds a couple months back at Barstool and, like, Joe Rogan and all that because he came out with a Netflix special. But, like, super Italian stand-up comic. But he was the mob boss. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was the mob boss, and he was dressed like in the classic mob boss fashion, where he would like have a suit, but then like a giant overcoat he would wear over the suit. But like his arms wouldn't be through like the sleeves; they'd be like underneath, and he had like a big scarf like around, like you know, the classic mob boss look. Um, so the plan was, we again, I don't know why this keeps coming up, but we had this girl that was like kidnapped, and we were using her as bait. Yeah, like because I guess he wanted to kill her. So we had her, it was like the, it was like a party going on. And in the basement, we had her like kidnapped sitting there waiting for him. But she didn't know it was like a setup. Oh boy. Like she just thought that like she was gonna die. I don't know why we didn't tell her. Probably should have told her, like, hey, don't worry, like you're not gonna die. She thought it was all real. Cause we were like deep, you, you know, deep undercover. Like, why did you uh, kidnap her? Well, to set bait for <laughs> for Sebastian Maniscalco. Okay. Um, it was because I was like, you know, I, I was like Leo in the departed, like I was deep in, yeah, in, in the fold, right? They thought I was one of them. Um, and it was set up where uh, Brad Pitt, who, who was this guy whose name was uh, Jack Action, I don't know, that was his, <laughs> that was his name, name. It was Jack Action. He was just like there to save the day, and he was like hiding in the back. And then when uh, Sebastian Mascalco would come in to like kill her, because I guess she did, did wrong by him, he would yeah. come out and kill him. Whoa. So like that, I didn't actually get to see it happen. I woke up before you that. You never do. That's the you thing about dreams. Yeah. Because you're always like, it's such like a complex thing. And then like by the time it gets to there, you're just like thinking about something else. Yeah. Brings you down another road. But uh, it, had, it had the makings of a very good movie in my mind. Um, sort of. I don't know. But it was it was interesting. I have, I have a lot of celebrities in my dreams. Yeah, you have. Like big time. What was the yeah. other one? Holly Berry and, uh, uh, and Tom Cruise? Cruise? Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, Rappaport was in the other one. Yeah, who was mine again? Who? Did I, oh, Adam Sandler. That's right. <laughs> that was fun. It was yeah. a good night. Who, who cursed you out about about you being at the SNL casino? Steve Martin. <laughs> Steve Martin, that dick. <laughs> Steve Martin was not happy. <laughs> oh man. But anyway, all right. Let's get out of there. Give me one more second. See if my nose stopped bleeding. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, next segment. All right. Tones Bones. All right. You have a bone. I do. So you want me to go first? Yes, because I still have to think of one. Okay. I had a very, very joyful, jolly week. Not a lot of things have, have happened to have a grudge against. It must have been nice. Um, nice. So I almost had a bone. Uh, well, two real quick. So I woke up early for the Yankee game today, and I was just like, I'm going to get some beer. I'm going to start drinking early. Game was on at ten because they're you know playing over in London, and I'm about to leave. I'm like, oh, I'm going to the, I'm going to the gas station. I'm going to get some beer. Talking to my dad, he's just like, it's Sunday. They don't sell beer until twelve. I was like, no, don't tell me that. What the fuck? And I looked it up. I Googled it. It was all like, yeah, you know, New York Sundays, not until 12. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are we in Alabama? This is bullshit. Yeah. And I was like, just on a whim. I was like, you know, I'm going to go and try anyway. And I just walked in, didn't say anything, put the beer on the counter. Guy rung it up. Boom. Out the door. Got it. So he, like this old Indian guy was like watching like a cooking video on his phone in like in Arabic. I was just like, he just wasn't paying attention. He just rung it up and all right. So wait, so like you're not legally allowed to sell beer, but like the beer fridges are open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you're just not like legally allowed to sell it technically. Well, you're lucky you have beer in your gas stations. That's nice. Yeah, that is that is a big 
big uh big thing that helps but anyway that wasn't the bone that was gonna be a bone if if i wasn't able to buy it but my bones would grub up oh right so this was let's see june 26th that was thursday friday no wednesday friday <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> no, I, think it was, I think it was wednesday so it was wednesday it was wednesday so i went to go order some food i'm not going to say the name of the restaurant because it wasn't their fault right but so apparently grubhub back in the day when grubhub first came out it was just like an app that the restaurants use and they would have their own drivers take the order and bring it there but now they're trying to be like uber eats they have their own drivers grubhub oh that go around to the places so um i ordered my meal about eight o'clock right um it says it's going to be there between 8 35 and 8 45. okay cool um around 8 45 i get a message uh you know there's there's a hold up with your order it'll be there between 8 50 and uh nine all right fine uh nine o'clock rolls around nothing what, what'd you order again uh greek food Ugh. you don't like greek food no you taste like windex uncultured swine <laughs> anyway so uh i'm waiting right i call the restaurant because because they have the map with like the driver on it and i guess the driver that they picked didn't like realize that he accepted it or whatever so i'm looking at the map and he's just at the mall like <laughs> like, like like five miles from the restaurant just at the mall like, what the fuck is he doing so I call the restaurant and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, your food's sitting here. They never came to pick it up. Um, we'll, we'll call Grubhub and we'll have them come over. So they call and I'm like watching the map and he leaves the mall. And it looks like he goes by the restaurant, but then all of a sudden he goes to like a Burger King. Yeah. And he's at the Burger King for like 10 <laughs> minutes. And then he pulls out and he goes into another parking lot. And he's just there for like another 10 minutes. Like, what the fuck is this guy doing? So I call back the restaurant. And they're like. Look, we called them again. Like they, they said the first driver wasn't answering, so they're sending another one. So I went on to Grubhub and I started communicating with the people on there, right? They have like a yeah. little chat thing. So I'm just gonna read you my conversation. Um, so they ask you when you join in, it's like what's what's the what's the issue? So I'm like the driver never came to pick up my food, have been waiting for over an hour and a half. Uh Carlo, this is the guy's name. This is Carlo. He goes, Thank you for chatting with Grubhub. My name is Giovanni. Right off the bat, you're like, What's going on? Hey, okay. Yeah, but his his, th his thing comes up as Carlo, but he says his name is Giovanni, so he's all confused. <laughs> he doesn't um, even know. <laughs> you know who he is. Probably from India. Don't even get me started on that again. Um, <laughs> so there's. Oh wow, I'm so sorry that happened. Let me see what I can do for you. And then I mess him back. The restaurant said the driver never showed up, and they called you. That the driver still never showed up, and they called you again and said you were sending a different driver. Sorry that happened. Please allow me a moment to look into this. All right, I'm waiting. About three minutes later. Thank you for waiting. I was able to find that the driver already picked up the food is on the way to deliver. We are working to get the food to you. Sorry for the delay. And I didn't answer for a couple minutes. Are you still with me? I said, yes. He goes, sorry for the delay, Anthony. The driver is on the way. At this point, I got an email giving me a $10 promo code. Right, for, for the thing. It goes, I just got the $10 promo code. I don't think that's enough. I could have gone to the restaurant and ate the meal in the time I've been waiting. I think I should be getting more. Fucking buried him. And he goes, I, I, understand, I understand, Anthony. Unfortunately, since we already provided $10 off, the system will not allow me to provide additional promo code. Sorry for the trouble. And I said, okay, sorry, I'm going to Uber Eats. They don't leave me hanging like this. And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Anthony. Is there anything else I can assist you with? I say, you can go fuck yourself. How about that? Whoa! <laughs> he's just like, we really appreciate your business, and we apologize we made you feel this way. <laughs> he told him to go fuck himself. I, told him to go fu I was pissed. I was pissed. I was waiting for almost two hours at this point for my food. Damn. And at that point, I Poor got a Giovanni. message. He I, didn't got do a, anything. <laughs> I got a message saying that the food was on the way again. It was supposed to be there by 10. 10 o'clock rolled around. Still nothing. This time I found the number. I called them. And they're just like, oh, you know, we're looking at our system and it says they already delivered the food. What a dick. So, and at this point, the restaurant is closed. Yeah. So it's just like at this point, I'm just like, I just want my money back. Like I want something. Like this is this is ridiculous. I've waiting for over two hours for this food. They didn't. Did they, did they, 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 they ended up refunding it, um, and they gave me uh, like a twenty percent discount Damn. on my next order or something. That sucks. Uh, I don't even think I'm going to use it. If I'm being honest with you, 
Don't delete the app. Yeah. Fuck those guys. Um, yeah, like I was just I was just so pissed. I hate, I hate Grubhub too because I used to use Order Up. Order Up was incredible, great service, and they they fucking delivered to way better restaurants. Like they had Outback Steakhouse, Dinosaur Junior Barbecue. Like fucking Grubhub sucked, but then Grubhub bought Order Up, and they did not like keep the same restaurants that Order Up had. So like I lost all the great places. So I just yeah. like I stopped using them because they suck. I just call like directly to restaurants. Yeah, and see if they can deliver, but yeah, fuck that company. Yeah, no. I mean, I use, I only use them. I usually use Uber Eats, but there's one restaurant in particular that I like on there. This Japanese place um, that's not on Uber Eats, so I use them for that. And then for whatever reason, this one wasn't on Uber Eats also, and I like their food, so I ordered from there. But I was just like, fuck this, man. I'm going to Uber Eats. Yeah, smart. They never like. like same thing happened to Postmates. Like I, I ordered from Outback. First time I used Postmates, I ordered from Outback, and they've just like waited like forty five minutes, and they're like, "Oh, we can't find the driver for you. Sorry." Order Postmates. Something. Postmates is so hit or miss. Yeah. Like most of the time, miss. It's like forty percent, and you'll get your food. It's yeah. pretty fucking bad. I haven't ordered food to be honest in like a long time. I yeah. just like cook unhealthily for myself instead of order it here. It's and cheaper. It's cheaper. That's the big thing. But I might order food tonight. Because I'm, I got a Domino's promo code staring right at me. Yeah, Matt, but I should have to be done. Uh, I got another little, 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 little bone. But uh, coming home yesterday, um, there was a different house in my block with a party full of Indian people. Um, came, came down the street, both sides of, of the parking on both sides. So like, I'm just driving like very slowly between these parked cars. Like, these people just getting out of the cars and just like standing there talking to each other. Like, get out of the fucking way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like I, have, I live on a one-way street, and you're blocking the only way to my fucking house. And I just got out of work, and I don't want to be sitting in this car anymore. I want to get yeah. in my house, and you're just sitting there, just blocking me. Okay. Thomas versus the Indians, just like a rivalry as old as time. <laughs> it's like Yankees Red Sox. <laughs> it's not. Can't, it's not even offensive. It's just. It's person. It's just a personal. Like you've you've had your beefs. That's yeah. It. Yeah, and and. Like I've known Indian people. I used to go to high school with like Indian people, and I was fine with them. I had no problem. <laughs> this <with> is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. I was kidding. <laughs> I, I, but it's just I can't help it, man. It's like when you got to deal with like a certain kind of person on a daily basis, and they constantly frustrate you. Yeah, it's hard to not sound racist. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, you have a, a particular uh you know race of customers that have their indians then the you know they use restaurant depot a ton and they're just bad customers I and mean, yeah they're it's, just super bossy and, and rude and and fucking annoying yeah hey listen I'm at, I'm at my wits end with them honestly like, I, <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't do it anymore it's it's all good it's it's fun but yeah they should get the fuck out of the street I mean, I mean, anyone anyone in the street I'm yelling at yeah i yeah. like People in, in marathons, people who are uh, just walking in the road. It's for cars. There's a sidewalk yeah. over there. Get yeah. in there. Get in the fucking sidewalk. Like, no, do you really have problems sharing the roads? So, yeah, I do. You know what? Yeah. Get the fuck Roads off. are for cars, not for people. That's it. That's it. But anyway, all right. Good bones. Good couple bones. Uh, seventh segment here, bringing it back. I want to bring back conquering. Interesting. Conquering uh, on the global scale? Is that what you yes. Mean? Old, old war. Like, I mean, I'm sure realistically that would suck, but like, I mean, like, maybe we could just break off of the packs so and just go conquer stuff. Like, you know, there's like a conquer law or something put in place where you can just establish territory. You know, it's like, I we, we went to war, the four of us versus the four of them, or the four of us versus the 28 of them. <laughs> we beat them all and we took their land. That's it. Yeah. That's, no. I mean, that's a good way to get a house for a good deal. Just go take it. Yeah, go fucking go. You want it? <laughs> you go get it. <laughs> and then just start taking over all of the houses in the hamlet, as you call it. Yeah, then you knock them down and build one giant house. Exactly. A yeah. Castle. I want that. I want to do that. But we'll be a little bit more civil about it. You know, kind of. There won't be raping and pillaging. It won't be like like old. Just, old just murder. Just murder. Just whatever it needs to be done. Whatever yeah. needs to be done for me to conquer. It's like, look, you could leave or I could kill you. There's two ways right. we could go about this. I don't so want I, to kill you, but I will if I have to. In a world of conquering, I wouldn't be a conqueror. I'd be a defender. I would be defending my property. Like, get off my lawn. <laughs> get out of here, you conquerors. <laughs> you goddamn Mongolians. I'd have a trebuchet. 
<laughs> at my front door, like I see him, I just like surprise open and just fire stones at him. <laughs> just have like buckets of hot oil sitting on top of <laughs> just pouring it on them, throwing rocks at him. Tar and feather. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my property. <laughs> yeah. But I mean that would be that'd be kind of cool. It would probably be a disaster. Um yeah, see the thing is not everyone can kind of play nice like that. You know, there will be raping and pillaging. Because mm-hmm. there are those people that like, like you look at at uh, at the last, uh, not the last, the second or last episode, Game of Thrones, where yeah. they get into King's Land and everyone starts raping and pillaging. Once, like you know, it's all said and done. Imagine rape being your instinct. What a dick you'd have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you just got that like, it's like you're all jacked up, you got all this energy. Let's rape her. Like rape, rape. Yeah, oh, no, it's like, great. you must have been tough like, growing up if that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't think he would be if you were, you know, just won a big battle. You don't think you'd be going around raping guys? No, I'd be, I'd be. Let's get some wine, celebrate. If there was, if there was raping going on, I'd be like John Snow. I'd be like, hey, stop, no rape. I don't know. <laughs> you just gotta go get him and break him up. But yeah, what do you got? Um, eating play doh. Oh, eating play doh. Eating play doh. You ever did that when you were a kid? I don't think so. I was a big Play-Doh guy. I don't know if I ever ate it. Oh, yeah. You know what I have? It's Yeah. I'm yeah. not talking like sitting there eating a whole container of Play-Doh, but like, you know, like you, you made something. You're like, maybe you made like the spaghetti or something. Like, I want to try it. I want to just, you know, yep. move on a little bit. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Just like maybe more so like just the simpleness of just like being able to play with Play-Doh. But I just want to like be able to go back in time where I could just, you know, if I wanted to, I could eat Play-Doh and it would be socially acceptable. Man, play, that's I would love some play doh right now, right? Like, how fun was play doh? You can make it anything you want out of it, especially if you got like the good shit. Like, if right. you just like, put play doh into something and like press down and like it makes like spaghetti, like you said, yeah. or like yeah. it's like it pre shapes it for you, yeah, yeah, make some stick figure people, yeah. You, you know how much play doh I, I would go through though, just by not closing the fucking lid right? You just open it up and be rock hard, you're like, fuck. It's the worst when the air got to it. Yeah. Good Play-Doh. Like the, the board game Cranium always came with Play-Doh. And mm-hmm. like if you had to get the sculpted card, you had to sculpt whatever it is out of the Play-Doh. And yeah. like you'd have to just eliminate that part out of the game because after a week, the Play-Doh is bad. Yeah. But yeah, I would love to play like Legos, Hot Wheels, Play-Doh. And right. uh, yeah, like Hot Wheels. Now that I just brought that up by accident and I'm looking down at the floor, I got some space right here. To get me a yeah, like loop de loop tracks, you know, and you just like, have them go until the battery <laughs> dies. Just like have that be a decoration in my home. Those things are fun as shit. You just put them in and it shoots them out. They go do the loops and they go, <laughs> they come back around, they shoot back through again. <laughs> yeah, look at that for hours. <laughs> Hot Wheels were dope. <clears throat> yeah, I would totally. Yeah, and Legos, like Legos is too much work. I still know people, the people who I know that do Legos still are like nerds. Like, yeah, yeah, like they're nice people, but like you're weird, you're a weird guy. <laughs> Well, what about you? Ever have the 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 Hot Wheels one? It was like the shark head, and it was like coming out of the shark's oh, mouth. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a huge yeah. one. Yeah, I had a lot of those, but let's bring, bring that back too. Let's bring those back. Hot Wheels bring and Play-Doh. Back. Bring yeah. back. Why don't we make it a Hot Wheel out of Play-Doh? See how that works. <laughs> It'll be a slow track, a clay track. <laughs> well, I'm anyway. car, but yeah. Let's get the haikus. Be right back too. I have to go get my charger. Okay. <sighs> I want to be ninja. All right. Ready? Yep. Would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Um, okay. Let's get the music. Okay. Uh, ugly color red. Your beards are fucking awful. Ryan Brazier, fuck you. Oh, so this is a straightforward one. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Would you like to explain yourself on this one? This sounds yeah. like more of a bone than a haiku. No, no, it's not a bone. I just don't like the Red Sox. I'm just yeah. sitting there watching the Yankees Red Sox game, and Ryan Brazier is in the mound, and he just has the worst, most awful beard. Yeah. Um, he does. And like all of them do. Like all of them are just like, yeah, maybe I'm like somewhat deep down jealous that the Yankees can't have beards, but it's like the Red Sox just notoriously have bad beards. Let's just fuck them. Yeah. yeah, just fuck them in general and like the stupid red jerseys and yeah, no, just and just fuck them stupid and I'm, the red socks. I'm so glad we stomped the nuts in this, this series. Fuck them for the whole world. How many runs have we put up on them in two games? 29 runs. Uh, what was it 17 yesterday, 12 today? Was it? Yeah, oof, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck, it. fuck them. Two games, yeah, that's a bunch of losers, yeah. I mean, the best part is we did on like the global stage, like everyone in Europe everyone's watching. And like oh, these, these Red Sox, this is kind of one sided rivalry, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Those Yankees that we've heard a lot about them, Babe Ruth, the history, the pinstripes, yeah. they're, they're the real deal. Those Yanks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Good, good for us. Yeah, good, good for, for us. us. All right, here's my haiku, real haiku. I want you to pay attention. There's a lot in this one. Okay. Hopefully, I don't get a bloody nose reading it. The pizza was good. Rebecca lost her panties. Where is my ham, babe? Okay. <laughs> so the pizza was good. We know that. That's a fact, yes. That's a fact. Um, Rebecca lost her panties. Where is my ham, babe? Um, so Rebecca was on a date with, let's say his name is Tom, right? Okay. Just throwing a name out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're on a date, and they get some pizza delivered. It's not a date. It's more of like a Netflix and chill kind of thing, right? Right. Okay. Like to, he invites her over. He's like, look, we'll watch uh, we'll watch Big Little Lies. Maybe we'll eat some pizza. Uh, the pizza, what was it? The pizza was, was, was amazing. What was the? The pizza was good. Pizza was good. Okay, so the pizza was, was good. I'm going to go as far as to say it's very good, and you just needed to say if I'm But that's not part of the facts. The facts of the case that the only – I'm just – I'm just facts. We only I'm have just assuming. Facts. I'm just going like – I'm just assuming you didn't have enough syllables. Let me run through the evidence one more time. Okay. The pizza was good, okay? That's okay. point number one. Okay. Point number two that's also a fact is that Rebecca lost her panties. Mm-hmm. The third part is like, you know, we can't really use that in a trial. Like somebody's hand is – where is it, babe? Right. So I'll go as far as to say is the pizza was so good that it got Tom lucky. And mm. he was able to get some action out of Rebecca. Um, after all was said and done, she's getting ready to leave. <clears throat> and she's like, hey, Tom, where's my panties? Lost them. Right. Uh, <laughs> and she ends up leaving. <laughs> and then, but she can't find her panties. So what she ends up doing is she ends up uh, fashioning a thong made out of ham, <laughs> a ham diaper, a ham diaper <laughs> to, to cover her ham wallet on her <laughs> walk home. And then after, after she leaves, he calls up. He's like, "Hey, babe, where's my ham?" Yeah, wow. <laughs> Would you my ham? You got there. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what you were going for? Is that no, I don't. I don't ever have like I always say. I don't come. I just <laughs> right. write. I fill in the syllables and then see where you go with it. And okay. like you, you, most of the time, make them somehow make sense. I mean, it does make sense, right? I mean, the peach is good. Oh, yeah. I mean, it had to be a pretty big ham, or really, Rebecca would have to be like ninety pounds. Well, see, you, <laughs> you were, you were thinking. Okay, so this is where we kind of got a little confused. You were thinking like a whole ham. Yeah, like a ham. I was thinking like deli sliced ham. Oh, okay. And she just like, I don't know, kind of Jerry rigged. Put them all together. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. It was just like one ham that kind of went, was like kind of wrapped around and she had like a, <laughs> got some floss. Yeah, makes more sense. I don't know why my brain jumped to like a whole <laughs> ham of her. She just like, hollowed it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> so hollowing it out and stepping it into it like, <laughs> like it's a swing set. <laughs> like it's a, fucking, <laughs> like it's a <laughs> massive diaper. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... um. <laughs> Either way, either way works. Either Imagine way. she that was her I like she lost her panties. So she just sitting with the she finds a whole ham just, <laughs> just guts it <laughs> through and then just puts the ham on. All right, leaving. <laughs> hey, babe, babe. She pulls her jeans over the ham. <laughs> yeah. that, Rebecca. She's the, pizza, the pizza was good. That's listen. 
I, I, okay. I'm sure people have gotten laid over less. Yo, all right, that was fun. Let's get to our classic four pack. Hit it, Kane. All right, good batch of four four pack today. Good good batch of questions. Yeah, questions. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I, well, I always go to ask Reddit, and I felt like they had a good day today. Yeah, but none of this is original. <clears throat> Um, sorry. If you could install one update to your body, what would it be? Um, this kind of lends to what we were talking about before, uh, a firewall in my appetite. <laughs> <laughs> just like something that like stops the appetite from getting out or getting in, you know? Yeah. It just that your body like knows like you have like a meter of like full, like when to eat and when not. Right. Like, like I wish. Like, I don't know. I guess there's people out there that just eat and they're just like, okay, like I have everything. Like Louis C.K. has a whole bit about it. He's like, I have everything I need to like sustain myself for the day. That's it. Like, no, no. Like I'm eating until I feel like shit. Yep. Like, you know, and it's, it has a bit about that. And like every time he has to like go to the bathroom, it's an emergency, you know, because <laughs> it's like you never just have to like, because you just eat so much and it's just like, you just need to get out. Yeah, and, eat, and then it forces everything out, and you're like, "Oh fuck, I got a shit." And it's, it's like a constant, it's a constant, just like shoving food on top of shit, and then that <laughs> food turns into shit, and by the time that's shit, there's more food on top. Of it. <laughs> <Shit down. laughs> yeah, it's like a factory. Like, yeah. Sometimes the workers just like quit, like put this food to the side, figure it out later, and that's how it <laughs> begins. It's a factory, but like the assembly runs running too fast for the guys to keep up with it. It's just yeah, like you, like you don't have enough, you only have like one shift of of workers. Like you need to get a night shift, yeah. <laughs> and it's running overtime. Yeah, <laughs> they're pissed at you. They're like this is like, oh my god! Just when I'm about to leave, this guy paperwork lands right at my desk, yeah. <laughs> and it's like in their world, it's like a stack of papers. You eating it like an entire cheeseburger, like or an entire lasagna. I admit, like I gotta deal with this now. No, I'm doing it tomorrow. And then he stuffs it into the fat. <laughs> that's how. That's how the stomach is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So what do you what do you got? Mine doesn't read as funny as I thought it would be. But I would, I honestly, I think I would like to put in a straight update where it takes away the gay. Okay. But it's it's tougher. I, I don't know. I love being gay. Just code the gay away? Code the gay back to just like you would like, it's like women. That's it. It's, okay. You know why? I think I'd be, actually I wouldn't be, but I think maybe if I was straight, it'd be awesome, dad. I would be stern. Because I was, I was hanging out with my brother's kid. I don't know how to talk to babies. I don't. She's two. I just, I just talk to them like they're adults. That's what I was everyone. doing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I hold Santa like at all times. <laughs> That's my <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> hey, Kate, he's always watching. <laughs> he knows when he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Be good for goodness sake. Yeah. It's because she was being bad. And I was like, You want you want presents for Christmas or what? It's, it's fucking June. <laughs> you're bringing Christmas. <laughs> June. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. Yeah, no, listen, like, like Santa instills the fear of God into children. What do you think Santa's doing right now? You think he's fucking taking an off day? Like, do you think that there's an off season? No, no he's, he's watching everybody. Plus. There's none. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> no days off. That's it. So my kids would be fucking a delight because I would just use Santa Claus as Santa. We would have a, instead of a crucifix, just like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big inflatable Santa. Just <laughs> we, Santa worshippers. <laughs> the Church of Santa. <laughs> I wonder if that exists. We worship Santa Claus. Maybe. I mean, you gotta, be, you gotta be careful that someone who's like dyslexic doesn't read that. Think you're like a Satanist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we're the Church of Santa Claus. And yeah, it's gonna sure. be good. But then when they grow up, I mean like the athletic side, they're not gonna get that. Um, but they will be disciplined. I will tell you that they'll be good kids and they will be good because I will get you called for Christmas. I don't give a shit how old you are. I I'm her godfather. If she's bad and I'm watching and I'm getting her call in her stocking and she's yeah. getting called three years old, that will be, imagine getting calls as a three year old. You never forget. That'd be, that. awful. That'd be awful. See, see what you got to do is what my parents did was they told me they're like, Oh, this, you know, you better be careful. And I'm like, Oh, come on. I'm not going to get called. And they're like, no, listen, like this lady I worked with, her kid was like real bad all year. He got called. Like just like give them like a, like a personal story, like personal reference. Like yeah, you know, like that that person's kid, they got cold. Like you yep. could be next. It's like oh shit, okay. Santa's for real. Santa's not playing cold. around, man. Why is it cold? Like it's just like it's not the worst gift. Like I mean, imagine he's like, like, 
or like it's you like know. useless. So like, what do you? What is it? What is a six year old going to do with coal? It's the symbolism. No, I know, but like that is the worst gift. At least with other things, like you said, oh, fart bombs. Like, well, you could use them on people, or you know, uh, whatever. Like coal. Like, what are you gonna? Like coal. There's no use for coal. Like even back in the day, if you if you got coal, you could like use it to like heat your house. You know, for an hour. Like it's yeah, one but, piece of coal. Like you don't get a stocking full of coal unless right. you're like unless you're really, really bad. Fucking <laughs> Saddam Hussein as a four year old. Like. But like if you're just if you're trying to send a message to your kid, one coal. And yeah. just like you get that, you have to go to school when the winter break is over. And like, what'd you get for Christmas? Like coal. Coal. <laughs> you got coal? What did you do? <laughs> Were you bad? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah I lied too many times. So, yep. yeah. I said I said a curse word. Yeah. You know. That's it. That's how you gotta that's how you gotta teach these kids. All yeah. right. That's how, that's how it's gotta be done. I wonder, that's how, I wonder how Jewish people do it. Hanukkah? Imagine getting, yeah, I don't know, eight days. You, are, you better be careful. Up. You won't get any jadles. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get to play dreidel if you keep this up. Yeah. Oh, no latkes for you. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of there before we get over the line. You've been very offensive this episode. <laughs> hey, that wasn't no, offensive. I've been very lenient. I'm still spooked from talking about my dream. That was the yeah. that was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Perfect timing. I, I, that's the film is going to be yeah. wild. Anyway, all right. Question number two: What is your? Uh, I didn't know someone could mess up my order so fucking bad dining experience. <clears throat> so I mean, I never really had anything that bad. Just you know, every once in like one time, I went to a restaurant and like I ordered like the veal asabuco and i got like a veal cutlet instead awesome. and that's not yeah awesome. that's not they're both veal so it's like understandable i get it um but i like i guess having to go back to my whole grub hub situation like just boof it up that bad like i don't i don't and it's the worst thing they do that because it's happened to me and it's yeah. sometimes you feel kind of responsible if you understand the business model like you're ordering food kind of late but like it's a it's 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 not that late yeah it's just the word because you go to bed hungry. That's it. Like you're yeah. like starving and like you want to eat this delicious food. You're indulging. It's a treat of food yeah. that you're getting. It's not like you're waiting for a salad where if they fuck that up, you're like, you know what? Just cancel. Yeah. <laughs> All but good. You, and you know what the thing is, is like it's not that far from my house. Like if I knew it was going to take that long, I would have just went and picked it up. Yeah. But it's like by the time I realized it wasn't coming, the place was closed. I'm like, well, not what, did you eat? I just had like chips and salsa. Damn. I would have went. McDonald's, to be honest, I should have, but I was just like, I was just so pissed off. I was like, just, I wanted to eat immediately. I haven't, I haven't been to McDonald's in about like six, seven months, and I'm like craving it recently. <laughs> I, start start, I haven't given in. I start because I know what happens when you get it once, it doesn't stop. I'm obsessed with the chicken McNuggets. I can't. They, they turn no you into good. demon worshippers or whatever. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna start like I'm terrified of having dreams. Like at this very moment, like now dreams have become real. That dream meant something. I'm not touching McDonald's. Yeah. That hotel that I was at in another world, when your nose bleeds after you're talking about it on the spot, that means something was up with that fucking dream. Yeah. So I think that and the McDonald's dreams, that was that was history. We should submit that to a scientist <laughs> or like a horror <laughs> film. The FBI and like let them are you talking about the the the, the death one or the or the McDonald's? Both. Okay, but well, the death one is more they I mean like the demon one you can use as like a preset, I guess. Is like you know, like this right. this happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well while you're here, you should hear about this one. <laughs> but this one I didn't want to tell because it was so weird. I bet you it's hard to believe. It was a weird setting, but it was yeah. so weird. We were just at this big hotel and everybody was like having a blast. And then he was just like the 29th of October. I'm like you done. Toast. I was like, oh boy, that's <laughs> that's like middle of football season. But, but you said it wasn't. He read the wrong name, though. He did. But then I looked. I I looked at the the list and I found my name. And it was pretty much the same date. I can't remember okay. the date it was, but it was like it's soon. Like that's yeah. what was the point of the dream. I was like, hey, I get off dream. Have some confidence. Jesus, <laughs> blood pressure is like best as ever been. Like, oh god. But I I mean I gotta watch out for like buses or like. Yeah, crazy. No. Almost like, people, you going... event, like like aliens invade or something like that. Our podcast will have some fucking uh, little October 29th. He dreamt it. <laughs> Call it. Messiah. If the... <laughs> I would totally be like, yes, I am. I am the Messiah. I would totally run with. No, nah, you know what? That would be a bad mistake. <laughs> if you know you're not, but you decide to go with it because people think you are. If you're yeah. the Messiah, it's like worship me. 
I would just be like, go get me some McDonald's, do this and that. <laughs> but that will spiral. The crucifixion always yeah. does. Always ten does. out of ten times always ends up in crucifixion, which I've heard is not fun at all. No, it doesn't look fun. I mean, just the nails and the hanging and the sun. I mean, the sunburn alone from just hanging there. <laughs> the Romans, Romans will just be there. <laughs> beers and they'll just stab you. <laughs> just and then you like full stab you're kind of like poking. You knock that off. I'm in enough pain. But anyway, all right, let's get to our next question here. Uh, what is your favorite song lyric? Um, it's a good one. This is a good one. It is a good one. It is a good one. Uh, I, I'm going to go. I got my my favorite current one and then my favorite all-time one. Uh, my favorite current one right now is The Weeknd, right? He's got a line in one of his choruses. Cut that ivory into skinny pieces. Then she cleans it with her face. Yeah, I love my baby. So, so just talk about cocaine. Oh, you like uh, favorite of all time. That's no, no, that's just like my current. Like, that's like, I don't know why I just like love that line. It's just like, it's a cut because he, he's talking about just like doing cocaine, but he says it like so elegantly, like yeah. cut that ivory into skinny pieces and then she cleans it with her face. Oh, like, yeah. she's like, you know, that's creative. creative. Yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> my favorite all time. That's real good. That's real good. Tons. <laughs> This is my current, like, my, the kick I'm on. My favorite all time. What are you, you on a cocaine binge? <laughs> <laughs> on a weekend binge. <laughs> um, Eminem and Dead Wrong. Right. That's the name of the song. So I'm just going to start reading. Uh, there's several, several, there's several different levels to devil worship in horses' heads, human sacrifices, cannibalism, candles, exorcism, animals, having sex with them, camels, mammals, rabbits. But I don't get into that. I kick the habit. I just beat you to death with the weapons. I eat through the flesh. I never eat you unless the fucking meat looks fresh. I got a lion in my pocket. I'm lying. I got a nine in my pocket. And baby, I'm just dying in a cocket. He's ready for war. I'm ready for war. I got machetes and swords for any faggot that said he was raw. That wasn't nice. I just I threw that last line and just... <laughs> <laughs> I could have ended it before that. But like, yeah, the lyrical wordsmith, the goat. I don't have to say any more, but... Yeah, that was good. <laughs> he told you you weren't a fan. <laughs> no, and yeah, it was terrible. But anyway, mine. I have a good one. This is like a prayer. It's like a prayer, a, a prayer of rock. Okay. Hail, hail to the good times, cause rock has got the right of way. We ain't no legend, ain't no cause. We're living just for today, and for those about to rock, we salute you. <laughs> Amen. That's a good one. I yeah. think my favorite lyric of all time, I think we already used it, is Get Up and Get Your Grandma Out of Here by Kiss. Like, dude, the opening line of the song. Like, that's just the most badass way I've ever heard a song open up. Just fucking pyro. And then it's just, Get up. Get your grandma out of here. That's just like, <laughs> knock off the bingo, knock off playing bridge. Let's go get up. Let's rock. Yeah. Let's, but this is, I like, I like an ode to those about to rock. So, yeah. We salute you. No, that's fair. I, I, that, it's very fitting for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's finish the show up with our final question here. Uh, what's your favorite pickup line? Are you tired? Because you've been running through my mind all day. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, I never hear that one. I'm, no? using, I'm using that one. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, uh, mine is, uh, are you Richard? Because I'm looking for Dick. <laughs> that works for you, not for me. But <laughs> somebody said that to me one time, and I, I giggled. I laughed out loud. I was like a fifty-five-year-old guy. Anyway. I got, I got another one. Um, are you from Chattanooga? Because you're the only ten I see. I thought, yeah, yeah, I've heard that one. You never, you're not giving me the, the opportunity to answer the question. I can't just be like, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, no, I was supposed to be trying to pick you up. My pickup lines are like, yeah. Did it hurt? When you fell from from heaven, <laughs> are you uh, running a marathon right now? Because like I'm taking a dump. <laughs> that was just me trying to wing one. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Uh, good show. Thanks for joining us, Bomb Squad. We'll talk to you. I'm going to Daytona. I'm driving down on Tuesday, so we. I'm going to be broadcasting live from Daytona. That's actually big news. I'm bringing my computer, my microphone, and we will have a Daytona podcast. Maybe we'll just have some random people walk up, sit down, and we'll just talk to them. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Figure it out. But anyway, thanks for joining us, Bomb Squad. We'll talk to you in Daytona. <laughs>